Today at VR Playland, we're giving you a sneak peek into uh, one of my favorite games uh, in VR, Sorrento. And I'm, I'm, I'm no, no offense to any other games, but this is my favorite game, just because I mean it was partially. They're probably partially playing a little bit on my desire to be a ninja as a little kid. But I think maybe all of us had that had that thought uh, when we first saw ninjas in martial arts movies. But this game has just been outstanding all the way through. Even with early on bugs and things like that, they this these guys, Swagsoft, I believe is the development company, they've really been amazing at listening to everybody. And they've really made, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I am going to speak for everybody because I think we kind of all feel the same way. You guys have been amazing at listening to the community and, and to people playing the game and really implementing some of the things that, that we thought would be cool in the game or that we thought could make the game play a little bit better and uh, I just want to thank you guys thank you guys so much for that now the game can be a little gory for you know some some parents and stuff maybe but as thoughtful as these guys are with everything they do you can take the gore off you can you know take those things off and then you really kind of realize it's just a challenging fun game and to be honest this is one of the this is my morning workout and so to my surprise they're not supposed to release this until the, the full release until February 6th but they added campaign mode to us for us <laughs> yes to my surprise today super bowl sunday and i was so excited this i'm gonna give you guys a sneak Tokugawa peek into on 11 january uh, the first uh, missions and stuff probably will play four levels or so no attendance for the coming of age festivities later today is expected to reach 25 percent the highest they've been in 30 years this is thanks in part to the children of japan act 2040 helping encourage young people to build a meaningful relationship with their parents. This just in, we have reports of multiple explosions across the city. Reports from Taito, Shimokitazawa, Nihonbashi. We encourage everyone in the Tokyo Cluster to remain indoors until the situation is under control. Take over. What's... Going on? You can't raise any of my contact. Attacks are breaking out everywhere. Chico, please respond. Uh, I'm here. Something's happened. It's an assault, Chico, on the city. What are you doing? Arm yourself. What are you doing? I was on my way to work. Just before the explosion. Any intel? Let me see. There are hostiles pinging nearby, headed right for you. Well, my neurals are playing up. Got time for a diagnostic? Hmm. Looks like the concussion threw your nanites for a loop. Better recalibrate your NIS. You know the drill. Follow the directions. Quickly. Sirento NIS orientation program live. Training module diagnostics. Up and running. Not picking up any unusual flickers. Everything seems good. You see the directions? Yep. Okay. Calibration and monitoring systems ready. You're good to go. So I'll give you a, a little walkthrough suit for some of the players that, that haven't played. We'll kind of hold up the Vive controllers here. So this is this is gonna be your teleportation. You press down. You can see it's white. That's not gonna. That's just gonna dash. So when it's green, that means you can jump. You're gonna press this in, and then you kind of aim your arc where you're gonna where you're gonna land. So this is gonna be your your jump. Now the wall run. See how you're gonna. The arrow is aiming sideways. So you aim your arrow. You aim your arrows, and when it hits sideways, you can actually run on the walls. And this is really cool. You can do multiple jumps. So again, this is all with the the trackpad here. You're gonna press it press it in and aim that little arrow and just keep going up and you can do multiple jumps and climb up uh, giant walls it's pretty awesome so here it's talking about how to slide so basically before I don't know if you saw my setup you adjust your crouch your crouching speed so like I'm gonna actually crouch right here and then when I before I hit the ground and I actually slide all the way over there here it's gonna show uh, the shoulders so you have the grip buttons on the sides here I don't know if you guys can hear that that's going to draw from where your shoulders, your waist. And once you have your sword, you just swing it like you would a normal sword. Now it's going to give me some pistols. Same thing. Use the grip buttons to draw the weapons. And then press this button, the top button, the button, button here. Kind of slow time. Or you can just use press in the trackpad and it'll and hold the trackpad and it will slow time. 
so you can get those better shots by pulling the triggers. And all the all the uh, all the movements are pretty pretty simple once you get used to them. And the biggest thing for me when I play this game is, you know, when you first do those few jumps. If you haven't played in VR, you're going to feel like a little nauseous because it's going to feel like you're jumping <laughs> in your mind. But your body's going to be grounded and it's going to throw off your senses a little bit. Activity very nearby. Over behind that wall. Likely hostile. Check it out. Well, that certainly was convenient. Tokyo's first terrorist attack in decades, and I'm caught empty-handed. Hopefully other Sirento got a chance to make a bigger pushback. This wasn't the only attack. Hmm. Have they been claimed yet? No. Not even those uniforms. I haven't seen anything like that since the 40s. They had body ogs. Looked freshly installed. I thought cyborg tech was illegal. That's what I mean. Been illegal since Venezuela, 47. The neural signals were human, but their vitals suggest otherwise. Picked up more suspicious activity back in Shimo. Let's say... Head back and gather intel. Back to ground zero. Pro cows is happening. They said attacks all over the Tokyo cluster. At least 12. And highly coordinated. Never seen anything like it. For now, we just need to keep our heads. Take our time. Gather intel. Let me know when you're at Shimo. So after that first little entry board, we find that um, we are back to my regular loadout. So right now on my loadouts, I have two swords, two pistols, and a bow and arrow. And I find myself using the bow and arrow quite a bit now because you actually have to pull back and, and shoot. And it's I find a great workout for uh, your arms. And plus, it's, it's challenging. It's really challenging to try to press the button in, you know, pressing this button in and, and teleport and jump while at the same time holding the trigger and pulling back. And, and shooting uh, the arrows and there's all kinds of different ways now you got to remember I've been playing this for a while in the early access so I have my character pretty pretty built up but you can get these things called relics attach them to your weapons and uh, really change the way you play the game like right now I have a relic to where I can shoot four arrows at, at one time instead of just one these are blade waves that you attach a relic to your sword and you hold down uh, the trigger button with your sword and then when it charges up uh, you'll see a little you'll see a little meter there charge up and then you can shoot a, a blade wave out at the enemies and you also have uh, different arrows so like I have explosive arrows or I have regular arrows that, that I'm shooting now now here's something coming up that uh, they just implemented into the game so this guy dashes at me and slices which is really uh, really a cool feature they just add it uh, a little bit more it makes the enemies a little more challenging and now I'm playing in Shinobi which basically is a one hit and you're dead so any hits will kill you 
but I do have an upgraded uh, relic on my helmet, I believe. And you can also attain it through uh, this, this skill tree that uh, you guys will find out about more later. That if you get killed, it slows time and basically I think gives you like 60 seconds or something to kind of uh, recover from uh, the hit instead of just dying instantly. So that comes in very handy once you start playing on Shinobi and, and some of the other, uh, th some of the harder difficulties. And again, there's so many different ways you can, uh, you can even adjust like how much time slows down or once you get the relics or that it doesn't, that you don't have like any acceleration. Um, so it, the game would be a lot more faster, faster pace and you wouldn't have so much um, slow motion. There's just so many, this is the coolest thing about this game, there's so many different ways that you can play it. So if anything at all hits me, even if you're fine, like you watch something and, and like I think uh, the next board coming up or something, even if like just one little shell from the shotgun that spreads out hits you, then it'll you'll you'll lose all your life and then you'll have to like try to recover because if you get hit I think if you get hit within 60 seconds or 90 seconds of being hit then you're done for so you gotta give yourself a little bit of time to, to recover which is pretty pretty nice these way waves are crazy those blade waves can go through walls and things, so they'll catch you when uh, you least expect it. So these explosive arrows, so these are pretty cool. There's one that explode on contact, and then these actually stick into walls and enemies. And then by pressing this hand, so if I have my bow on my left hand, um, if I press this trigger, if it, if I have the bow in, it will actually explode. So you can shoot a bunch of these arrows in people or walls, and then as the enemies get closer to them, you can blow them up. Or put like five arrows into an enemy and then blow it up and it'll have an explosion impact of uh, five explosions all at once. It's pretty darn cool. Slow motion is awesome. Really feel like the Matrix. And so one thing that's really cool uh, about the, the campaign that I was wondering how it would incorporate. So you see that the, the characters are gray and yellow. When they're gray, they don't know where you are. When they're yellow, that means they're alerted to something. And when they're red, then they call all their friends to come and get you. So it does have a very stealth mode in it so far. And uh, I, it's, really, uh, it's really implemented, I think, really well into the campaign so far. Um, that, I, that I've tried uh, even more so than just uh, kind of when you're just playing the free-for-all I mean you just shoot one person and then they all pretty much come after you but they've definitely in this last update they've definitely uh, upgraded uh, how they react and it's real easy to tell uh, if they've spotted you fully or not to alert so if you are very, if you are stealth, again the the bow and arrow is um, very stealth. They have uh, some the glaive. They have uh, shurikens and like little small daggers. The bow and arrow. All these things are are stealth. If you shoot somebody with them, unsuspecting. First, uh, first off, it does more damage if you uh, attack them when they're not aware of you. And then second of all, second off, uh, they don't call their you know their friends. So there is an incentive to to be uh, stealth. And then once they again, like I said, once they spot you, it's pretty much all out war. So <laughs> you might as well you can grab some uh, pistols or whatever if you like. Again, I like playing with the with the bow and the sword because it's uh, more exercise really and more of a, a challenge. Uh, 
there you can see I just shot like I barely pulled it back so it just shoots it very uh, very short luckily I had the explosives on and explosive arrows and it kind of worked out but yeah so it's very it's very lifelike like if you pull your arm back further a full pull um, it will have more velocity on the arrows and go farther and if you have uh, regular arrows on it will it will you know penetrate it can penetrate through enemies and it's really really cool boxes you have basically have to shoot to disable the lasers or the lasers will, will cut you and this is just like a cool little thing before you get into uh, the actual level I hope they implement some more of this uh, on some of the later boards because this was I thought this was really cool it just kind of adds to the gameplay and switches things up a little bit gives you like little even though this is a pretty easy little little challenge here you'll see these lasers come down at me box quick before they slice me Okay, now we're going in to the real board. The servers are kept underground. We need security stacks. To break through stage one QFB security, the hostiles will need to physically damage the stacks. Don't let them near the server stacks. Got it. Hostiles are already patrolling the area looking for the servers, but the server stacks are still sheathed. I flagged them up on your HUD. Get the enemies before they get to the servers. Chaco, protect those servers. So on this board, uh, basically you have servers, if you, if you uh, follow along with the dialogue there, if you guys could, you have these servers which are your, the Sorrento, your Ninja Clan servers, and these guys are trying to hack or destroy the servers, and you have to stop them from uh, destroying the servers. So the first part of this is you're just kind of fending off the enemies, and then you'll see that 
you uh, actually have to protect the servers and they will run after the servers and try to uh, destroy them and this is I found this board pretty challenging like there's a lot of enemies as you'll see uh, to fend off on, on this part here So here's a really cool moment. I miss a few times, but I'm sliding and then shoot him right in the kneecap. Oh my gosh, that was awesome.
Call the techs and remove the servers. Listen, we're just finishing over in Adachi, but other sites across the city are still under attack. <laughs> Let's start a tally. Huh. We both know we win. So that's a sneak peek into the first few wars of the campaign in Sorrento. I'll give you guys a, a sneak peek, and uh, I won't do too much more because I want you guys, I think you guys should play this. If you're in the Tampa area, hit us up at VR Playland on, on our YouTube page or uh, Facebook, and you know we could set something up at your house to, to check this game out and some other really amazing games. But all this was uh, viewed through, basically recorded, uh, through what I would see so uh, all the gameplay you saw is stuff that I would I was actually seeing only when you're inside the VR It's even a little bit of a wider scope. I'm gonna leave you guys with a little bit of the next mission some highlights from the next mission where you fight the first uh, Luchi, uh, first woman ninja. Let's see what she's got. She disappears and can throw knives at you and uh, They're pretty they're pretty challenging. They're pretty they're a little bit annoying and challenging at the same time, but this is and this is done through uh, the third-person view, which is built into the game. If you press the top menu button here on your offhand, it will bring up a menu to choose to record, which is a really awesome option. So, and then it saves it to whatever file that that you save it to, and it actually shows all your gameplay from a third-person view. And here is. The female ninja here introduced and this is a boss at first I was like shooting her five million times and I couldn't figure out why I was taking so long to beat her and then I realized what uh, what broke and said is actually uh, a boss that you're that you're fighting here you have to play this game like I would say VR is worth getting just to play this game and that's just my my feeling and uh, I just love absolutely love this game. So I'd like to thank Mixed Realms Studios for uh, this this great project. Mixed Realms is the actual development team that uh, created the game. Swagsoft, I believe, is the parent company. Uh, you guys correct me if you're wrong, but I'm sure Swagsoft had a great uh, a part in getting you guys going. But I just want to thank you guys again so much for being such awesome developers and really treating uh, the, us players and as family and really listening to what we have to say and investing in the game so much and I'm glad you pushed back uh, the release date of, of the full game until now because I think it's really paid off and I think anybody that plays this game will realize that it paid off. I can't wait to finish this campaign. I love you guys. Peace. Done. I'm getting out of here.